All right, we've uh, recovered from lunch, so we're going to go ahead and finish on the wall here. Uh, <clears throat> here we have Felix Mumi. Now, as I was saying before, I picked these people based on certain types of messages that I wanted to get through, especially to the students. Mumi was a, a radical politician in Cameroon. Uh, he wasn't the president, but he probably would have been the next president. He went to meet in Europe with, in Belgium, to negotiate some terms with, you know, some of the folks who had, of course, been their bosses during the colonial time. Uh, he met in Belgium with some people. He was having lunch, having dinner, and they slipped thallium into his drink. So he drank the drink. The thallium was supposed to kill him five days later when he got back home, but instead it killed him overnight. So the next morning he was dead, and they had a uh, major scandal behind it. But the main point I just like to make is sometimes, you know, when you think you're negotiating in good faith with people who are trying to ma maintain power, be, be careful what you drink. <laughs> Don't drink it. <laughs> bring your own drink. Bring, bring your own bottle, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot more to him, of course, about his political philosophy and things that they were doing in Cameroon uh, coming out of the uh, colonial period. Sekahuni, Sekahuni is well known down in the Limpopo area of South Africa. You know, he's uh, important because not only did he have to fight and resist the Boers, um, you know, which were the, the Dutch descendants in, in South, South Africa, but he also had to turn around and mount resistance against the British. So he got to fight uh, the Dutch and the British, all trying to maintain some sovereignty down there where in South yeah, Africa. He's well known. Brenda? <laughs> <laughs> Nahanda. The great Nahanda, you know, I've met people who named themselves or their children Nahanda. Nahanda was kind of the spirit woman of the great Shimarangas, which were the wars of resistance against the British in Zimbabwe. So when they really, you know, start these resistance movements, they oftentimes have some spiritual leader actually at the forefront or really behind them that they depend on. As they did in a lot of cases, they finally captured her and sent her into exile, but she is one of the great leaders of the Shimaranga. So when you hear Mugabe and these talk about the second Shimaranga, the first Shimaranga was under uh, Nahanda and the people who were following at the time. Human rights, courage, uh, Martin Luther King. I like telling this one to the youngsters so they can understand it. It wasn't just the, of course, I have a dream speech. I let them know about, you know, his speech war. against Vietnam and war and these kinds of things and the kind of courage he had. Some people were trying to convince me that if he were here today, he would be, you know, trying to figure out how to get Joe Biden reelected or something. You know? <laughs> what? I'm, not, I'm, I'm joking yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. But you know, but the point yeah. is, they, they watered him down to a point yeah. where, you know, he's not the king yeah. we knew. Why we can't wait. And if you ever, yeah, why we can't wait, and, and that's in Riverside Church, if you've never seen the video on the Vietnam War, that's more where his head was at near the end of his career. Mm -hmm. At Shepsut, the great female pharaoh, some of you maybe have been to ancient Kemet. I haven't been, but I've seen some of the, the just uh, beautiful mm -hmm. uh, monuments that were made under her um, command. She also had spread out her, her reach outside of uh, Kemet, and they find that she's been in a lot of other countries, places we consider Middle East countries. She had influence, of course, over in the Ethiopia proper, uh, the great Hatshepsut. Uh, Kaliterat, this one is this one is important for the youngsters too because now here we are in Nubia, which is not that far away. You know that's the Nubia Kush southern uh, corridor of the Nile Valley. Uh, Kaliterat and his people had to meet the Arabs. We're talking 641, the Arabs coming south. They're now in control of Egypt, coming south, and they were able to meet them and fight them to a standstill. Go into a contract with them called a Bakht, B A Q T that basically forced the Arabs, you know, to stay their ground. Now, there was some concessions made that, that we wish we didn't have to make, but the point is they did have enough power to at least uh, block the, the movement of the Arabs south into their land. So, and then they forced them into a treaty, and once again, <laughs> to show that we had some kind of real sovereignty and real power, the treaty lasted 700 years. Um, Just uh, set that down somewhere. Perfect. Oh, that's the that's yeah, that's, gonna be, that's the basket we're, we're filling we're, up. That's we're, what I'm talking we'll work about. Work on that when we get back up here. We're trying to get our library together. The greatest of all times. Yes. Yes. And uh, 
And what I emphasize on this is his courage because most of the children who come through here don't know anything about his uh, resistance to being mm -hmm. uh, drafted and not going to Vietnam and that kind of thing. So I explained to them what he did, why they stripped him of his title, and that's part of him being the greatest because uh, he didn't have to do what he did and mm -hmm. I don't know many today who would do it. Black George Joke, if you ever go to Senegal, there's a place called Kayor. It's a fishing village now. But at that time, uh, uh, Lat George Job was the Damal or the king, uh, the king or chief of, of Kayor. Of course, the French were in Senegal trying to run their railroads inside to get resources to bring them out, which uh, infringed on his direct suzerainty. So he went to war with him and his people and his sons, dying in battle. But he's a great Lat George, well respected, well known in Senegal today. Antonio Maceo, Cuba. Um, they call him the Bronze Titan. I haven't been to Cuba, but a few of my friends who have been there say that he's well recognized as one of the uh, top military leaders uh, leading the Cuban army against the Spanish. You know, they had to fight the, the Spanish War, the Independence War from the Spanish first, back in those days, even before, you know, we had the second revolution with Castro and all. The Bronze Titan, Antonio Maceo. Patrice Lumumba, a lot of us know him for, mm -hmm. you know, his, his speeches and everything. But I give, I take this opportunity to not just talk about Lumumba and his leadership and his vision, but also some background on what actually happened in the Congo, how we lost those 10 million people during the rubber trade with uh, uh, the Belgian king uh, uh, Leopold and all of these things. And so the chance to let them understand the brutality and the just the you know, savagery that went along with the Belgians, King Leopold there in the, in the Congo, and what's going on in the Congo today, mm -hmm. which is uh, part two of the tragedy. Mm -hmm. We've lost something like six million people in the Congo, basically for the same reason, not rubber mm -hmm. in this case, but coltan, copper, mm -hmm. and all the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you know that story. Kwabanika from, uh... oh, by the way, yeah. So we're getting a little, a couple little drone shots of what we're doing. <laughs> so y'all will see yourself first time on one of Bomani's videos in a drone shot. I like that, I like that. Kwabanika, we'll go real fast. He was uh, just uh, strong resistance against the Germans there in Tanzania. They also call him Kwawa. So you look him up and check him out. Uh, Hannibal, still having uh, solved this picture even from last year, but Hannibal was the great military strategist of course, who marched his elephants up through the Pyrenees in France and all across the Italian Alps to surround Rome and uh, neutralize their power during the great um, wars of Carthage and Rome. Uh, Elijah Muhammad, you know, we know a lot about Elijah Muhammad living in the U.S. Now on one side, a lot of, you know, we, we know the downside. We have to be careful because you have to look also at the man's record and what the Nation of Islam was able to do at the time in terms of business, in terms of banks, in terms of uh, consolidated. Uh, just as close to a nation, inside of a nation, as black folks have had since Garvey. So, you know, we have to weigh the good and the bad, and plus we know we have a Malcolm, and we have some of these other people, and Muhammad Ali and others who've come out. So, uh, he's still a great man in his own right, and shouldn't be, I think, marginalized totally because some of the other indiscretions, which I'm not defending, but you know, there it is. Uh, Ida B. Wells, I think I said on your mm -hmm. other video, a lot of people, students, before I put the words here, thought it was Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, I had to explain, but this gives a chance to explain wow. lynching. Mm -hmm. You know, because they can't imagine what the lynching is like. Sometimes I even have some pictures of the lynching, and, and you know how it was, they were enjoying it like a picnic, and they were all having a good time. So Ida B. Wells, journalist, anti-lynching crusader, uh, threatened to be lynched herself, but just a picture of bravery. Uh, John Akello, uh, Bomani, uh, Bomani, Omani, <laughs> wasn't you, Bomani. The Omani Arabs uh, had really been in a position of dominance and, and suppression of the native Africans on the island of Zanzibar. And so Okello and his men finally came out clean sweep and um, you know, just overturned their rule and put Africans in charge, at least for a while. Then later Zanzibar connected with uh, Tanganyika to make Tanzania. Mm -hmm. 
the great fella Kute. Uh, we know fella is one of the most talented mm -hmm, and courageous mm -hmm. artists. So in the face of whatever pressure he was put on by the Nigerian government, fella didn't care. He'd come out more bold and crazy and radical and uh, yeah, also okay. strong-minded than, than before. His mother was also yeah, okay. a very, very serious uh, uh, reformer courageous woman and once you read a little about his mother you see where he got this they're still in political court. grit they're still in court for that his mother dead yeah, they uh -uh. no they're still in court for it right they're, they're still trying to sue, sue the government for, to show out the, the, that wind and killer ah okay i don't i didn't know that but they i'm not i'm not surprised yeah. threw her off the uh, uh, the great sure. Zumbi, you know, if you've been to Brazil, and I think Bumani's been there. Yeah, Brazil to Palmares, is the spot. The northern part of uh, Brazil, you know, we had Africans who had, had just like in, in Jamaica, had quilombos, which were basically African maroons in Brazil, against the Portuguese. Uh, Palmares is the most notable one, lasted over 100 years. Zumbi was the leader of Palmares, and uh, I've been to Brazil. I didn't get all the way there, but uh, I got close had some car problems, but um, mm -hmm. they have Africans up there in those mountains still speaking pidgin African languages. Mm -hmm. So that's how strong the culture was. And they needed it to maintain some freedom there for themselves. This is an addition since you were here last time, Bomani, um, uh, Nascimento. Nascimento. Nascimento was a, uh, you know, he was a musician, a poet, a uh, writer, scholar, politician, but you know, he was kind of where we go to when we're trying to understand what's happening in the African-Brazilian context. And he wrote a lot and he spoke a lot and you know just uh, gave us a lot of information. So African activists, African-centered activists there in Brazil, par excellence. The Jomo, which uh, as you see is still alive. You know, when I did these, all ancestors and, and I thought the man was gone and I tried to remember <laughs> I said, I can't remember him dying, so I went on YouTube somewhere, and you know, of course, there he was dancing. So, <laughs> so I said, he's still kicking, elder statesman, but of course, you know, he came along uh, during the uh, anti colonial days and led Namibia uh, out of their colonial doldrums into freedom. And he's still an elder statesman there today in Joma. Booker T. Washington, sometimes I get a little bit of resistance on this one, but. You have to look at what Booker T built, what's still there, what it's produced. Um, book by um, uh, Wright, I've forgotten the name quickly, but um, Irene, Irene Wright, I forgot exactly. Anyway, about Booker T Washington and Pan Africanism, it really turns out that he, undercover, was doing a whole lot of things to support Africans who were coming into the country and to export some of the, some of the processes. Now we're concerned that some of the other um, orientations people may not be happy with, you know, in terms of his political outlook. But functionally, Tuskegee is still there and he, he did a lot to build up African education in the U.S. and abroad. Great B.B. King, what can I say? Blues man, uh, my father's favorite. You know, I could have put um, Louis, Louis Armstrong and some other people, but I thought I'd start with B.B. King. Like I told you last time, my father said, if BB ain't on the wall, ain't no wall. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So there we go. Sometimes you gotta succumb to the pressure. You know? <laughs> uh, the great, brilliant Walter Rodney, uh, how Europe underdeveloped Africa is uh, probably his most famous work. And um, if you ever get a chance to hear Walter Rodney speak, uh, he's just one of our most brilliant, uh, you know, he taught in, in Africa, Nigeria, all around. Unfortunately, he was killed back in his home country of Guyana. But just a political genius and an academic intellectual marvel. Uh, the great Queen Amina, I like for the young ladies to remember that even as far back as 1530s, 1540s, that in those great northern house states of uh, today's Nigeria, we had women who were, were at the helm. So the great Queen Amina. Rosaria. Eduardo Manlani, I think I told you last year I was going to repaint this, but I haven't. Um, but he was basically the one who started Free Limo, which was the African resistance organizations against the Portuguese there in Mozambique. Unfortunately, he was killed with a letter bomb. You know, they, they sent the letter to his parcel, he opened it, the thing exploded. 
when he died, his, his number two person, which was uh, uh, Michelle, case rose to the rose to the fore. That's Manlani. He, you know, like some of these people, he didn't have to do this. You know, he had a PhD from Oberlin College. He could have just relaxed, but no. He said, we got to get our people free of what's going on. Garrett Morgan, it's always nice to let them know that, you know, there's a uh, traffic light and the gas mask and some of the other things were invented by African people. And so that's always good for them to know. The children really are fascinated by that too, by the way. Okay, quickly, Franz Fanon, a brilliant psychiatrist. Died around 36 years old, but you know, Franz Fanon, wretched of the earth, a uh, black face, white mask, uh, a very, very deep analysis of the thinking of, of colonized people and their inability to break out of that and their inability to break out of that until you know we get past a certain mindset so and of course we talked about the redemptive psychological qualities of violence in response to oppression so that's why I like a lot of the young radicals like him because he talked about a violent resistance to oppression John Chilimbwe uh, Malawi there's another one who was in the U.S. a long the time, got studying uh, theology and this kind of thing. Got back to Zimbabwe, and of course the British hadn't changed, even though he had studied all the wonderful ethics that they wrote on paper. Yeah. But they turned out to be the same people they were when they gave him the Bible, mm -hmm. so he had to get back and fight for his land and his people when he got back to Malawi. Seiko Ture, Seiko Ture, you know when the, when, the, the, when the French basically came out of the colonial times, they were saying, look, everybody who wants to be a member of the French community, you know, sign here. And every African country who was colonized by France signed on, with the exception of Guinea. You know, Seiko Ture said, thanks, but no thanks. As a response, the French tried to isolate him, physically destroy the infrastructure of his country before they left. But he hung in there because he was basically trying to change the consciousness of the people. And in, and in a way, went a long way in doing it. He also took uh, Nkrumah in when Nkrumah was, was forced out uh, of power in Ghana and took him as a co-president there in oh, Guinea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's great Seiko Ture. I'm Mrs. Sarah. Some of you may have heard of Nigritude, the literary uh, African uh, literary movement, you know, writing, uh, not just the writing, but the arts, the poetry, the plays, all of these things. Uh, instead of trying to imitate the French or fit into the French, you know, um, structure, they were just breaking free and saying, no, this is how Africans think, this is how we write, here's how we express ourselves with a literary tradition. And he's from Martinique, great poet, writer. If you get a chance, um, one of the translated work, uh, Discourse on Colonialism, was really, really, um, I consider it a, a great work. That's Cesare. And that was Leopold um, Senghor from uh, Senegal who was also part of this movement, along with Damas, also out of the Caribbean. Samaray Ture, this is another example where I was talking about sometimes when you are fighting and you're taking over other areas and expanding your empire, but the result of expanding the empire is making you a bit more powerful, a good deal more powerful, in this case against the French. So he resisted the French by far more effectively than anyone else. Mm -hmm. There's not, not even, I can't think of anyone else who was able to be, resist him as long and as effectively as Samori Touré. Now he was, they said he was a related, you know, a grand uncle or something to uh, Seiko Touré. But I'm not sure. and then we got Kwame Touré. Mm -hmm. Now Kwame Touré was the old Stokely Carmichael, you know, when we grew up. Black Power, Stokely Carmichael, that was the guy who we were always looking up to. Of course, he moved to uh, Guinea. He was born in Trinidad. He mm -hmm. moved to Guinea. I think he went to Howard, actually. If I'm not mistaken, I have to look that up again. But anyway, he went to Guinea, changed <laughs> his name to Kwame Ture because he had Kwame from Kwame and Krum and then Ture from Seiko Ture. So he put together Kwame Ture. Sometimes you see the old, sometimes you don't. That's what it was. He was married, as I mentioned, to uh, Mary McKeever for quite some time. She was living in Guinea with him. But you know, for us, he was the black power, the face of black power, the face of black nationalism in America. Like when I was a kid coming up, that's who we remember and we saw. So he had a lot of psychological impact. And of course, he started the All-African People's Revolutionary Party, which is still going on today. 
Now, for a lot of you all who study, read, you know, the great teachers, John Henry Clark, Yosef Benyakin, and too many books and too many publications to mention, but suffice it to say that uh, a part of this library, when I get done with it, will be dedicated not just to their works, but works behind their works. Okay. Edited and written so many things. Uh, the great Winnie Mandela, you know, passed lately, you know, Winnie didn't take no stuff. And they didn't like her. They were afraid of her. They maligned her. But if it wasn't for her, uh, would nothing kept going. So you had to have these kind of people. And it turns out she had a level of strength that a lot of the other ones haven't had before or since. That's the great Winnie Mandela. We know our sister Frances Cress Wilson. You see Marimba Ani's here. They were also very close. Taught us a lot about uh, the nature of the enemy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> taught you something about how if you don't understand them, you'll be in deep, deep trouble. Mm -hmm. So we know uh, I'm a Francis Chris Wilson and she's left us uh, quite a legacy. Yes, she did. And so that's that. Now, the, any questions? We're so happy y'all made it. <laughs> and that's the library coming on. So we're going to do a little, you know, a little library uh, basket over there so we get a chance to do that in case anybody feeling the feel. So when did you start working on the library? Started working on the library last year. Um, spent a lot, got, you know, it's a pretty big place and the second level is going to be a, a, a classroom, conference room area there too. So what I'm trying to do now is just get that next level so I can bring the youngsters in there and they can be in the shade when we do our Saturday studies. So we're, we're on it y'all. That's excellent. Now, so Jerry, um, what are the next set of people you're looking to add to the wall? Cause like you have so much more wall space. We got all this wall and we got it all the way going back up. So we have as much wall space as we've already seen. Yeah. Okay. So we have so many African people who deserve to be there that we need 10 walls. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people are asking me, you know, my, my cousin Willie did this, that, and the other. Can we get him on the wall? Yeah, for real, you're, you're joking, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I said, what he did? He said he could book the numbers, didn't need paper nor pencil. <laughs> I said, no, I, no, we got too many of them, you know. It filled the whole wall up with them. So. You know, and then the Ghanaians all have their favorites, you know. So, you know, it's, uh, but you know, we, we know the kind of person. Somebody was mentioning today, where was Mary McLeod Bethune? Yeah. And I said, you know, where is Sojourner Truth? You know, yeah. so I can go down that line a long ways, you know. So, but I'm trying not to overburden, over not burden, but over represent the American African, and I'm also trying not to over represent the Ghanaian African, because you can imagine they come down here where you know <laughs> my uncle was the biggest chief in you know Lingo, wow. <laughs> you know, and all that. So I'd fill it up with Ghanaians if they let me. So. We're open for suggestions, but you know, I have a whole lot of people in mind, of course. I mean, the what about Nelson Mandela? I knew, I knew you were going to ask that question. Oh, me? Yes. No, not you. Somebody always gets that before the camera goes off. <laughs> That's what it is. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Winnie, and Winnie's telling, I'm, I'm asking her like every week, Nelson? She said, I'll, she said, I'll tell you when it's time. Yeah, I got the same message from uh, Winnie also. She said, don't put Nelson up there. Well, she didn't say, she said, just wait till I tell you. So The wait may be long too. If you don't see him, that's because I ain't hear nothing. But hey, it ain't on me now. I don't want y'all pointing at me. It's... So Winnie, we'll come back in December and ask you again. Put it this way, when black folks take charge, then we'll think about it in South Africa. But until that day, uh, we got to wait a little while. Yeah. In South Africa, yeah. South Africa they have that museum. They still have, they, they still have apartheid there. One section for the white to enter, and one section for the black to enter. Is that right? What building? The, 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 the museum. No, the, the museum is just a demonstration to explain how it was back in no, South no, no. Africa. I went there. If you are a white, if you are a black person, don't tell me. That. If you, I, I, it's serious. I'm yeah, I went there too. I mean, if you went there. You can't. Enter, you can't enter to other black person. You have the, the black side where you pay your fee to go in, and the whites go over here. I think they're just messing with you. I was there. They did the same thing. It's a demonstration. Yes, I'll go over the other side. Were they demonstrating or was they really serious? No, no. They pull it up on YouTube and then we can. I'm not explaining. They should, you know, with the, with the signs. Like kind of like how it was in America. No, it was a documentary, and the, even uh, there was a YouTuber also. You were talking. Oh, you see, they wow. said they get rid of apartheid, but look, 
Okay, I have I to pay road, man. Uh, on All the right. black side so to go My man Ben, when you And see... I have to go on the white side and hey, show you the white lady going through there and he have to go mm -hmm. through the black side. I hope y'all ain't... I hope nobody's got it. I hope nobody's running That's away so uh, from the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> we got a drone shot on you. <laughs> so you... <laughs> we got a drone shot on you. And if... Uh, top of your head, so you behind on child support. I hope you had your hand on you. Oh, wow, yo. The numbers go... <laughs> so family, you, you see, you see, as you see, we started with a whole group. But basically, and, and the others are, are relaxing, enjoying it. But they're gonna check out the footage they make it online. So family, that's what we set up for your family. We set up a full set up of this memorial wall. We just went through all the portraits. And family, as Jerry talked about the library. Every time I come, I talk with Jerry, he's always working on something and that's what we have to do, family. Get land and build something to where we can connect our people yeah, and keep them, you know, and connect them in a strong way, strong energy. And as we are just going back up to the restaurant, just giving you it's a nice sort of view of this uh, compound. I first came here in 2008 and it was just the house at the front and then all of this was just all virgin land. So that is the best investment family. But this wall is incredible. We literally walked the entire length of the wall. Same as we did last year. The white people when they when 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 the ANC win, uh -huh. the white people drunk. They were they were, they were joyful when the yeah. ANC. Yeah. I know they okay. wanted for that. Oh man, big wow. money. Hey, yeah. Money in the house. Did you see that yeah. big wide? Yeah, that's all. All right, thank you. So. Where, where's, the, where's the money guy? Is he, is he here? Yeah, money guy. The guy, the guy that changed yeah, yeah, money. I'm, I'm, I'm the car. Yeah. Yes, Kobla, we have finished the incredible memorial wall. Were you able to do it in one shot last time? Were you able to do the whole thing one time? Yeah, yeah but not without a lecture. Uh, well, family, we have all of this recorded. And we have it available, the last year version and this year version. And it's all good family, it's all for the purpose of education as we continue with the memorial wall and just showing you the rest of the property. And, and knowing Jerry, all of this entire wall will be filled with more ancestors in the future. Very progressive brother. And you know, that's what we gotta do family when we come to the motherland. We repatriate, we come and we just build with a vision. And people like ourselves, you know, when we come to Ghana, we definitely wanna make sure that we always support our brothers and sisters from the diaspora, you know, and definitely also our local brothers and sisters here in Ghana and other parts of Africa. Now this is the complete energy of nation building. Yes, my brother, appreciate the drone footage. Yes, appreciate the drone footage. Yes, man. I'm sure the children was enjoying the flying. <laughs> they did. <laughs> All I heard was screaming and just jumping up and down. <laughs> so restaurant on top and guest house on the bottom. So this is a beautiful thing about land family, you know you? You just have all of this space to do more and more things. So family, you've seen your shirts. You've seen people with green Africa for African shirt, white ones, red ones. You know, we're spreading the love and spreading the connection. And in a minute, family, we're going to board and work our way to Willie's house and then work our way back to Accra. And I'm working you back to our starting point.
and my favorite fruit of all time mango nice mango tree look at that view family and here comes a little bit of money look Be careful, little man. Be careful. Who's the guy who got a drone? Yes. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. In 2008, stayed right there. And I came over here to Prom Prom, Mingo area, to connect with my good friend, Jerry Johnson. And now my little boy and his children are playing in the yard. And family, as you see this wall right here, and I'm showing you this for future energy. As we come here in the future, I'm sure we'll see all of this wall, 360 degrees, all filled with ancestors' energy.